hurt. No, I think she is. Yeah, she's Ouch. hurt. She took a hard fall off there. Oh, okay. gosh, I hope she's okay. I wouldn't do. I wouldn't do that to you. Look who we have. Welcome in. It's our first guest on the Daily Puck Drop. We do it every single day here at PuckSports.com, uh, which you can find it there. You can find it on YouTube. Just search Puck Sports. Also, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, my favorite part, wherever you find your, your podcast. Normally, just me wow. going off for about 25, 30 minutes, but the beautiful, the handsome, the well-groomed Brad wow. Adam is here with us on uh, the Daily Puck Drop. Hashtag Brad the dpd all right well you're our first guest welcome i like that i gotta okay. get up early to be your first guest i, I know like you had that. to get up early there's a day game for the These mariners we th- are, are killing us i i know they are killing they're just us. ruining us so we thought we would do it early we'll get kind of a preview we can recap yesterday and then we'll have the human pony cake ryan divish will be on the show later <laughs> uh ryan will come on and, and spread his sunshine and joy coming up uh, yes. live from toronto uh, afterwards, but uh, we thought we'd get you on. So welcome in. How how Thanks. are you? Thank you, man. I'm good. I'm good. Thank okay. you. Yeah, you know, up up. I've got kids away. Yeah, in Palm Springs for spring break. It the whole family and gone. the dog. Yeah, just me and the dog for the last so, like three nights. So the whole family packed good. up in the in the in the Griswold yeah. wagon and said we're headed to Palm Springs, and you've got to stay back because you got to work. Someone's got to earn some money in the Adam household. Exactly. And I got the dog. <laughs> and I tell you what, Puck, not once. How good is it? How hey, good is it? it? Yeah. They're like, hey, do you miss us? I'm like, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, don't, you li- don't. You don't. You got to lie once, a little bit. Hey, not once has that TV been turned to the Hallmark Channel. Oh. We have not watched any Love Island or Bachelorette or whatever. <laughs> I, I, it is. I tell you what, I have to watch some of that with the girls. I don't know if you've don't seen you, that because your, your kids aren't old no, enough. No, I mean, pick, my right? daughter's 14. She, she doesn't no, watch she's that. Into it. She's, no, but she watches. There's something on um, on HBO that she's into right now. Little Big Things or Little Big Lies or something yeah. like that. I don't know. That's what she's watching. Now, this show, it, it's ridiculously dumb, as you would imagine. They all are. Of course. But yes, like, absolutely. This one is like really promoting hooking up and... <laughs> Going as far as you can, and the yeah, girls no. are like watching and no. talking about hooking up and this and that. I'm like, oh, the hell second no. my daughter comes Shut down and down. says, second my daughter comes down from from her bedroom and goes, you know, I'm going to check out this new show on HBO called Euphoria. I'm like, no, oh. we're gonna we're gonna basically we're gonna x out <laughs> HBO. That's gone forever. Ter- I've seen a few episodes. It has oh, to be gone forever. Course. Zendaya, okay. she's like a hey, Disney star. It'll be yeah, fine. Between Dad. me and you, you you've seen oh more than God. a few, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> With Sydney Sweeney. Oh, oh my God! Jesus. Like, are you kidding me? Oh Lordy, uh, Ooh. yeah. Ooh. All right, here it is. Not daily, for my girls, right, not yeah. for your girls. The daily Ooh. puck drop. We try to cover the top stories of the day here. Brad Adams is our, is our first guest here on the daily uh, puck drop. We'll try to do this a, a little bit more. Let's just focus in on the M's. You got the you got the pregame show today. Uh, on Root Sports, what time are you going to be on the old air? We're on at 11.30 with the okay. Aussie, the hyphen. Now, it's kind of fun to watch Toronto play because, you know, they have Isaiah kiner Falafa, the yes. second hyphen. But we have to call, you know, Ryan gets a little oh. touchy when I mention, hey, there's my favorite hyphen. He, he does not yeah. like that. So, I gotta, so are they the only two yeah. ever in the history of the sport? There, oh, I think there was one more. Okay. But he, I think he's the only current one. So yeah, I like to claim his. Here's as my, my advice favorite. to you, and 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 you don't need it. And Root Sports no, I, doesn't I need it. Okay? No, okay. I love your advice. No, I love it. Let's focus on the pregame on that, and let's just not talk about the team. <laughs> can we, yeah, can what do we you want to talk about last that? night, right? Well, I don't know, man. Couple of home they, runs. Uh, yeah, they have dropped the first two games. They're four and eight on the season. It'll be Gilbert and Kikuchi, but we've seen it's the same thing, right? It's poor defense. It's poor pitching. And the offense isn't delivering. What what do you make of what's happening right now with the starters? Because this is the one thought, the one thing that we thought going into the season, right, Brad? This was going to be rock solid, and so far, none of them have been rock solid. Yeah, that's been the the one big surprise. You know, you're right. You kind of guessed that the offense would be spotty, hit and miss, and it has been. Although they have started to homer lately, which is a good sign. Uh, the defense, you know, we, we thought it could play play out like this, and it certainly has the first twelve games. Uh, the start, it, it's 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 a little boggling, you know, to figure out what is wrong with these guys. It, one thing you can point to with Castillo and Kirby, their last couple of outings, they just can't put away hitters with two strikes. They're giving up a lot 
of two strike hits and a lot of two strike RBIs. And these guys are are really good about once you get the two strikes, then what do you do? You know, you spread the yeah. zone a little bit. You know, you spin it a little bit. You get them to chase a little bit. But for whatever reason, you know, they're 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 too close to the plate, and these guys are fouling off pitch after pitch. I think it was twenty six foul balls last night on Kirby. The one at bat Springer is a great example, right? Third inning, he fouls off eight consecutive pitches. Kirby just couldn't put him away with two strikes, and he ended up getting an RBI single. Um, the same so, problem with, with yeah. Castillo uh, exactly. the night before, but it's been the same problem for Castillo all season long. I, I wonder if there's a rhyme or reason to it. I mean, I don't. They didn't seem to have an issue with it a year ago or two years ago. No, you're right. And the stuff is, is pretty much exactly the same. You know, the, the pitching guys are saying the velo is there. The no. movement is there. It's just, for whatever reason, they're getting too much of the plate. When they're making mistakes, it's too much of the plate. And, and again, with two strikes, they're just not able to get the swing and miss like they normally have. It, you're, it, it, it's weird to watch them because you're so used to them, you know, striking out and getting deep in games. And they just haven't done that. They're just like almost pitching the contact and they're getting hit and to your point earlier about the defense you know plays are not being made behind them right. you know we saw a couple more last night with polanco um you know he only has one error technically on the year he, technically but there's a handful of errors exactly. and he's just he, what he's not doing exactly. he's not helping them out he's not right. doing anything that helps them out defensively right. and then you see it and the one thing we like about george kirby is this this guy will wear his emotions on on his sleeve. Mm -hmm. So you know when plays are not being made behind him, he gets so agitated about it. And almost it's to a point where it's, it is affecting the way he pitches when people don't make the plays behind him. You can see the frustration growing. I mean, he was frustrated last night. He's throwing his glove. He is, he's, he's agitated the second he comes out of that game. So, yeah, I mean, defensively, they're not making plays. You know, Kirby, though, I would also uh, say this. There was a point in the game yesterday, and I, I don't know if it was the Springer at bat, but it was early in the game where he wasn't holding the runner on over at first base. And the guy had a lead. I can't I'm blanking on it's who it was. Show. Far it's far show. His yeah. was halfway down the first baseline. Yeah. And, and he's he not even paying time. attention. Right. And then, and and he then finally. And gets the balk. Yeah. And then he gets the balk. Yeah. I mean, it's. I, I guess, Brad, it's little things like this that they're not doing well. They almost look, and I know that they prepare as, as well as any team does in spring training and even out of spring training, but they look unprepared. And they, just, they look like they haven't been practicing, which is just is kind of mind-boggling and frustrating to watch and, and cover. Agreed. And, and, you know, when things are going well, you know, it's good baseball. When things aren't going well, it's bad baseball in all facets. And the skipper's talking about it last night post game. They're just not playing well. They're not being playing like the Mariners, right? They're not pitching. They're not playing defense. They're not getting timely hitting. You know, it, it's, you know, it, we talked yesterday, Puck, and it's the same record after 12 games as last year, four and eight. Um, it doesn't make it any better, but it, but it lets you know that, um, there's a lot of time and season left, as these guys keep saying. Um, and also, when you look at the standings, they're really being helped out by nobody is do doing anything right. in the West. You know, Texas got out to a nice start. Now they've lost three in a row. They're six and five. Then the Angels lead the division. Houston, four and eight. Yeah. All right. So, so that I mean, really but it, helps them. Is it scary, though, to keep kind of going back? Hey, we've been here before. We'll do it again. Because I, I'm with you. It, it feels like a run will be happening and will come. Right. And it's such a long season. And they, they have tended to get off to these, these poor starts. Julio always gets off to a slow start. At least that's what he's been like early in his career. But, yep. I mean, you keep, you know, we went through this a couple of years ago. Can the bullpen do it one more time? Now the bullpen was able to, to replicate what they did a few years ago, how, how, uh, how sharp they were and how well they executed. But can we rely on them going on a long run again? This would be the third straight year where they would go, they would stumble and then go on this right. incredible run. I think it's it's yes they can, but boy, it's a lot to ask for a team to do that three straight years. It is, and it's a little different team, you know, a little different players. I, I think guys with track records that will and can hit. You know, Hanniger's starting to heat up. I mean, I think he's going to be fine. Polanco, yeah. we assume is is going to be fine, right? Francis look good. Francis look good. JP and Julio. I would imagine they would be fine. But yet, when will they be fine? And also, you, you mentioned the bullpen. They've had some some big injuries, you know, with Brash and Santos sure. out. That really hurts them. Now you got a couple of more guys in Bolton and Snyder out. Uh, they had a couple of more call-ups from AAA. Um, so they're piecing it together now. When those guys get back, 
in May. Um, I, I would imagine that, that that gives them, you know, a boost. Uh, the seventh, eighth, ninth inning uh, becomes much more clear for them. Um, bigger arms, more dominant arms. I think that, you know, you hope that they keep leads, you keep winning games, you start to go on a streak a little bit. But maybe it's going to be, you know, when those guys get back and the offense tries to uh, guys figure it out a little bit, you know. They just got to kind of tread water until, I guess all the facets start start clicking like they're not doing now. Do you think? Can you you looking back to last year? Do you get a sense that the the players in the same vibe in the clubhouse, or is this year carry a little bit more concern and frustration than maybe a year ago? I think because of of the changes and kind of who they brought in and who they got rid of, um, it, it's a little confusing a little frustrating that they're still striking out at an alarming rate one of the highest in all of baseball it was 10 more last night um and it's just it just looks the same you know um hopefully it it won't look the same all season but the offense again very spotty hit and miss um as i mentioned that they have started a homer four homers the last two games which has been nice um but uh, you know there's no panic but it, there's more it, frustration maybe not even the right word just kind of like surprise almost like man, yeah we're four and eight because they're just not making off yeah they're offensively they're not making anybody work no. you know where the where the opposing offenses are really making these starters work especially you mentioned the two strikes right four two strike mm-hmm. hits yesterday three runs in the second off two strike hits but then on the flip side offensively they're not doing they're not putting any pressure at all on these starters like no traffic. N- none of them. No traffic, no nothing. You know, minimal runners in scoring position. You know, I mean, you're you're right about the home runs, but you can't live and die on just, you know, solo shots. No, and that's what's hurting them, too. And you're right, the first six innings, well, the first couple of times through the lineup, they're just getting nothing done. You know, you go yeah, back to the Milwaukee series, and, and they've hit some home runs, and they've scored late against, uh, you know, the back-end guys of the bullpen, kind of the, you know, not the – the elite arms in the bullpen because it's five, nothing it's five, one. And you know, the guys just kind of closing out games. It's, it's, it's frustrating obviously to watch. And I think what else is frustrating and, you know, fans like to point it out puck is when you look at all the guys, the high strikeout guys that they got rid of are all playing pretty all well doing so great. far. Right. <laughs> like tearing the I, cover I, off the I ball. Just, yeah. Yeah. I, I notice you know, it. I notice it every morning when I wake that. up. <laughs> hey, how about Jose Caballero? With the uh, D bat, excuse me, with um, the the Rays, Tampa Bay, yeah, yeah, three, I think three fifty three, three more hits last night it's playing just, shortstop. It's it's, like, it's it's come on, it just feels like the the organization Gosh. at times is cursed. Let me ask you here, uh, Brad Adam, our guest. Normally we talk to Brad solo on Wednesdays, uh, but because we got a day game today, we thought we'd welcome on on to be the very first guest here on the daily puck drop. Awesome. The hashtag DPD. You can find it anywhere. Pucksports.com, YouTube. Uh, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, anywhere. Just search up Puck Sports. The are the, your family. When do they come back? Because they're gone. Brad's home by himself with the dog. Awesome. With, tonight, with Monday. Oh, tonight. I know they left. Did you? Did, they come did, back tonight, and they switched their flight to come in a little earlier. I'm oh, like, hey, don't worry about it. Did I'm you good. try and convince them, <laughs> son? Hey, stay a little extra longer. I know, there's it's, a it's, there's a flight out of Palm Springs at 4:30 p.m. <laughs> Perfect for you guys to take that one. In fact, don't even oh, yeah. worry about it. I'll do it for you. Yeah, let I'll me make change it. For, stay another day. It's cold and rainy here. You don't want to come oh, back. To you the don't want to come back. Stay Nothing would be better for you as an stay avid there. golf fan to have them away. And starting tomorrow, what, cause tomorrow, what's tomorrow through Sunday. Uh, it's, it's the great. It's an off tomorrow's, day and to, tomorrow is the greatest week yes. in the history of sports. Yes. The Masters. And it's an and, off day tomorrow. Oh man! But instead. No, who knows what I'll be doing. We're going, we're going, you know? we're going to, my wife's got a, got? Uh, her family has a, a place in Idaho. And so we're going to over there. We're leaving Thursday to go over there Thursday oh, night. Nice. My mom and lives she's there. Like, we're, we're in Idaho. Uh, like uh, kind of by spirit Lake, you know where that's okay. at kind yeah. of by uh, Coeur d'Alene, Sandpoint yeah. area. Yeah. And so, you know, where America is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so my wife sends me a link. She's like uh, the CEO. Yeah. She goes, Hey, uh, here's a hike. I think we're going to do on Saturday. I go, uh, well, uh, you guys have fun. Yeah. I will not be going on a at hike. I'm going to be. 7 o'clock at night, I'll go on I'm a hike. I'm going to be sitting <laughs> my fat ass on a couch watching golf. Damn I mean, great. I'm literally just driving 
four hundred miles <laughs> to go sit. to go watch golf to go sit down. Uh, real quickly, who do you like? You got a favorite? Oh, Masters or Mariners? Uh, Masters. <laughs> I like Gilbert today. You know, I think. Okay, Kikuchi, well, Chris, you like Gilbert no, Kikuchi yeah. because he's sleeping in too much. The guy sleeps fourteen right? hours. No way he's going to be prepared for the game today. Nut job that guy is. Um, you know, much like in my uh, NCAA uh, basketball pool, You're gonna go chalk. I, I did not go UConn because that okay. was too easy. I'm not going to go Scheffler. That's too easy. Okay, too easy. Um, Tiger, no. Yeah, well, uh, that'd be great. You know who I'm going to go with, um, and I believe um, the pronunciation. I'm not quite sure, but the big kid Obert. from Norway, Ludberg, Ludwig o- Obert. Oh, is that how you say it? I think it's Obert. Obert or Obert. 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 I don't. I just call him Ludwig. Ludwig. So you're going to go. You're going to go with Ludwig. the rookie. I'm going with the rookie, Ludwig, and also I like uh, Zalatoris. Come back from a little back injury. I think he'll do okay. well. Okay. Well. He Those just makes me nervous with the putter. I know. I know. He but makes me real well there, nervous with the putter. Which is surprising. He has and, played great there. And I would love to say Rory, too. But well, does anybody yeah. think that he can win there? I'm going to go Brooksy. I'm putting no, my money on Brooks Liv, Kapka. No. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Why? I'm going to do no. it. Because I just think he's due. And he doesn't care about anything other no, than doesn't. these majors. And I think he's going to do it. You know, he's. it's crazy. They had the stop, uh, stat last night on Golf Channel. You know, all these other greats, you know, who have five majors, they've got, you know, 50, 45, 50 plus wins, right? right. You know, he's only won 16 times on the tour. Five of them are majors. Jeez. I mean, that is insane. That's crazy. Man. Yeah, yeah, you're that's right. Crazy. That's all he plays now. You're right. That's all he cares. And that's all, that's all he cares about. So that's what I'm going, yeah. going with. Going all right. Wrong. Enjoy 1130 Root Sports pregame. Yes. Uh, Brad, Adam, what do you guys got planned on the, on the program today? Well, I'll make fun of the hyphen, which is what okay, good. I do about half the show. I enjoy that. Um, good. We'll go back a little bit last night. You know, we'll, we'll talk some Julio as well. You know, his exit velocity, you know, you know stat guys love this. It's really, he hits the balls just so hard. Oh, he's, he's been, scorching him. He's unlucky, and he's going to get it going. But we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, we'll talk uh, Logan Gilbert. We'll talk this road trip. You know, they've lost six of seven. They got to get this one, get back home, uh, and enjoy the home crowd at T-Mobile. But that's all coming up at 1130 game uh, noon. Okay. You are the best. Thank you awesome. for being the very first guest on the Daily Puck great, Drop, the man. DPD. You look it's all great. all downhill from now for you. It is all, all downhill. downhill. <laughs> Again, tell your family, stay longer. Okay. Take that long, okay? late, late flight. Yeah, take the late flight. All right, Brad, we'll talk to you next week. Awesome. Appreciate it. Bye. There he is, Brad Adam, Root Sports, who uh, will join us. He joins us every Wednesday, but because of the day game today, we thought, hey, let's just do – uh, you, uh, the DPD, the daily puck drop. And he said, uh, okay, we made it work. And I think we'll add more guests onto it. I think the daily puck drop deserves a, a live guest. Uh, quickly, uh, the Mariners, we kind of touched on it there with Brad. I mean, it's just a, it's just a disaster. Uh, offensively, they're not good, especially against right-hand pin- pitchers. They rank dead last in almost every statistical category. Offensively, the starting pitching now is a problem. And it, maybe they're just in a rut, what have you. But, boy, it has just been uncharacteristic of this team, of what they're doing starting pitching-wise. And go back to the George Kirby thing real quick. He's a great dude. I mean, I love George Kirby. You know my kind of stance on Kirby. I I think he's the best guy on the staff. One thing he's got to get better at and he's got to learn when players – in fact, because I just had this conversation with a couple of guys on my Little League team. Uh, uh, Shout-out Fisher Plumbing, uh, who's practicing tonight – and uh, we're welcoming the parents into practice tonight. It's kids versus parents pitching and home run competition. That'll be fun. I'll give you an update uh, tomorrow on the daily puck drop uh, there on Thursday. But the I had a couple chats with uh, my pitchers on this one. Because a couple of guys, including uh, the vampire, get a little frustrated when plays aren't made behind them. And they show it on the mound. So I pulled them aside and said, you can't do that. One, that's not good for your teammates to see. Everybody makes a mistake. They pick you up all the time by making plays behind you. You don't need to act like that if something happens. If they bobble a ball, don't make a throw, make an error, what have you. Move on to the next play. Forget it, move on. And I would say the same thing about George Kirby. He's got to move on better. He tends to dwell on that stuff uh, way too much. Uh, Quickly, another quarterback coming in for a visit for the Seattle Seahawks. This time, Spencer Rattler, Ian Rappaport. Uh, with that at rap sheet, uh, 
Shout out, Mayor. How are you? Uh, he visited the Seahawks uh, yesterday. Uh, PFF ranks him the 70th overall prospect, 7th overall quarterback. Uh, Spencer Rattler, of course, uh, spent time at Oklahoma. I, he left right when Caleb Williams, I think, came in, if my timeline is correct. And then, of course, I uh, went to Oklahoma State. Uh, he's considered day two prospect. They're bringing in quarterbacks, so they are at least signaling to everyone that they may draft a quarterback. I tend to think, I don't know what to believe with these guys. Either they're serious about drafting a quarterback or this is just a bunch of smoke screens because they want people to believe that they're going to draft one. I don't know. They also brought in a couple other guys in their top 30 overall visits. Uh, defensive end Grayson uh, Murphy out of UCLA uh, visited. Chop Robinson uh, visited as well. Defensive end out of Penn State. Uh, Jared Verse also made a visit the Florida State uh, defensive end. So, again, read into it what you want. Uh, but that's who they uh, brought in. Hey, a real disturbing story. Sorry, my ear itches. For those uh, listening, you didn't see that. But for those watching here, PuckSports.com and YouTube, uh, you saw that. Uh, UW uh, running back uh, Tybo Rogers is facing uh, two counts of of rape. And uh, that's uh, concerning. Uh, therefore, uh, Tybo Rogers, uh, two different incidents with the same uh, MO. He's been suspended by the program, didn't play in the Pac-12 championship game, but did play in the semifinals and uh, the national championship game. Uh, one woman filed a Title IX complaint against Rogers and the school uh, last uh, November, December 15th. Ryan Grubb, the new Seahawks defensive coordinator, excuse me, offensive coordinator, uh, told SI that, quote, we're working through some things, some challenges, he had off the field. I can't comment on what it was exactly. You probably saw the video yesterday of Jed Fish. Uh, Jed Fish saying he was not aware of Rogers' previous suspension until recently. He said when he heard of the allegation, suspended indefinitely. Again, there's a lot is being made of the reporter from I don't know what TV station she was from. You know, thinking that he was st- he was the head coach. That's on her. She should have known better. But let's not make it about that interaction between the woman and Jed Fish. Because there's people trying to make that the story right now. And the story is, who knew what at Washington? And why was this not communicated properly to everyone? Or maybe it it was. Uh, But there is a failure. Again, Washington is not the only school that, that this happens to. But there is a failure of communication. And it starts with that school president. And I'm not a fan of this school president. But it starts with her. Because I guarantee she was aware of this situation and if she wasn't aware of the situation then that's a failure at the the highest level this is your university you should know what's going on and the problem is if you don't know what's going on then you're not a leader you know the the biggest window into your school is the athletic department and is the football program and you as a president need to be aware of all these things uh, but Fish said the, that no one in the program told him of the Rogers suspension in December. Again, that's a failure in the president in leadership at that university. And I would put it solely on Anna Marie Casse. Also, Fish, but here's the thing. Fish may have known. Okay, he may have known this and just played coy and played dumb when talking to reporters. That has to just at least be on the table. You know, the way he handled the Jaden Dolores situation in Arizona, he doesn't get a lot of a weight with me and others of how he handled the, the Dolores situation. So I don't know. I don't know what to believe really with that story. A terrific reporting quickly. Uh, Christian Capel on Montlake, in-depth reporting. I would go read all of his work uh, on Montlake. It's great. Uh, Capel does a great job of, of breaking this all down. Clearly looks like he uh, has the uh, police report on all of it. Uh, in-depth reporting, you know, the, the first, the, you know, late November. I remember this story when we were on the radio. The the first victim posted a message on Insta- Instagram accusing Rogers of raping her. She was contacted by Rogers via phone call. She doesn't know how Rogers got her number because they didn't exchange numbers. It was, uh, they met on Tinder. Uh, she hung up, blocked his number. That same day, she, t- she, she filed the Title IX to the UW's uh, office. Uh, Court records include law enforcement officer's objection to Rogers being released. And I think this is kind of a scary quote here by the police officer. He said, uh, or they said in the report, if released, Rogers is likely to commit another violent crime. 
So the way I read that from the police officer's account, it appears they view Rogers as a serial rapist. That's very scary and concerning and, and just a, I mean, an unfortunate story for all parties, for the women, for everything that's going on. And uh, it's just scary. I mean, you read this police report and there's a lot of, uh, and I think more details will come out of it. Um, I've, so, I've seen uh, portions of it and it's, uh, yeah, it's just a, it's an awful, awful situation going on there. But again, I'll, I'll, I'll just repeat it. And maybe I'm biased because I do not like her. This is a failure of that president. That president needs to know what is going on in her athletic department and her school. And the fact is, if, if Jed Fish is telling the truth, he had no idea what was going on, uh, that's a problem for her. And I would just ask this question. Why, when the, the, the Title IX, uh, when it was filed with the Title IX uh, back in December, okay, why was he not allowed, or in November, why was he not allowed to play in the Pac-12 title game, but then allowed to play in the semifinals in the national title game? That's, a, that's probably a, that's a conversation for Troy Dannon, uh, Kalen DeBoer, and Ryan Grubb. Those are the three people that uh, you'd want to probably hear from. Now, I know efforts were reached out, I think, by the Seattle Times and also Christian Capel, and uh, they declined. Uh, to comment uh, on that. Uh, Puck to Picker Masters Pool. It is out again. Runmypools.com. Click join pool. Enter the code NLAT. Big thanks to Bill Sanders uh, for reaching out, providing that. All you got to do is just uh, click on the link. Runmypools.com. Click join pool. Enter the code NLAT. Game is simple. You're going to pick five golfers. We base the results on money earned. Straightforward, simple, easy. No money to sign up. Completely free. If you see an ad pop up there, don't touch the ad, all right? Just click on the runmypools.com, click join pool, enter NLAT. Big thanks to uh, several outlets for, for uh, providing prizes. First place, $150 gift card to John Howie Steak. Second place, a $75 gift card to Georgetown Brewery. Third place, $50 gift card to Flat Stick Pub. So thank you to them. A quick shout out to Tara uh, Vanderveer, Stanford basketball coach. She's uh, retiring, made that announcement. You know, growing up as a kid, she was awesome and just the, like the best coach. That was the best program. Just a hell of a basketball coach. Also, uh, lastly, uh, there's a, a story in the Seattle Times today, and this affects me because I, I encountered these people at, at a park the other day when I'm coaching baseball. Seattle wants to uh, add more dog parks. I would say why? Because all anyone does in this city is take their dogs to baseball fields and throw the ball on the baseball fields. I've got two beautiful dogs, a black lab. She's an older lady, Maple, and uh, Alder, the super pup, who's a, a chocolate lab. Listen, they love, the th they, they love to throw the ball, and they love to, to run anywhere. And I hate the dog parks, especially the one that's by me in Golden Gardens and Ballard. It's awful. But I take them there because I don't take them to baseball fields, so they tear up the fields. We got a kid that busted up his ankle uh, two weeks ago because there's potholes everywhere at Gilman Park where these dogs, dogs just dig in in the outfield and so there's holes everywhere so i got into this the other day at practice because gilman park and there's a facebook like page this is what i love about these people they have a facebook page called gilman park dog club or something i mean they're advocating this is where we go to play with our dogs and i was just telling people because we're trying it's it's a madhouse there we're trying to keep people off of it because we had an incident in our games last week with one team playing, one team practicing. Dogs were running into the game, into a softball game, a double-A softball game. And then one of the dogs jumped on one of our players. And so we're just like, we're trying to get the city to get on this. Can you please stop it? Can you do anything? Of course, they can't. They won't do anything. Or they just don't have enough resources. And so we were just, we're just going up to people and telling them, hey, please stop. And most people, when I was at practice the other day, were fine. This one woman, and just typical, 27-year-old gal who just you know you can't tell her anything this self-entitled gal and i say hey and i was being nice would you mind just please taking your dog off the park like it's you know it's not good they're not supposed to be here i got two dogs i get it it's easy i know you don't like the dog park but please we got a kid that got hurt busted up his ankle and we just we're trying to prevent people from coming on the on the baseball fields anymore. And she goes, OK, I understand. So I walked away and thinking that she would leave. 
What I take five steps. What does she do? She throws the ball, and she's been doing this when I was walking over there for like 10 minutes. I turn my back, walk away. She throws the ball again right into the infield where the Seattle Parks had come and dragged the field. So it's perfect because they got a game coming up the next day. They've dragged it perfectly, and the dog's just tearing up the infield. And I turn around, and yeah, I lost my cool, but I was well-deserved. I mean, just F-bomb after F-bomb. But again, get the damn dogs off the baseball fields. They don't belong there. This Gilman Park Dog Club. If anyone can join that Facebook group, please join it. Let me get in there somehow. I'm not on Facebook, but I would love to interact with these people, okay? That is the Daily Puck Drop, which features our first guest today, Brad Adam, Root Sports. Check him out on uh, on the pregame today. Coming up later after the game at PuckSports.com, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music. Uh, we'll have Ryan Divish live from Toronto to wrap up the baseball action. Thursday's coming up. It's our NFL football Thursday. Rob State will join us. Also, Mike Garofolo. We'll talk to you soon. As always, we promise to be better. No shirt, no shoes, no dice. Would anybody like to smoke some pot? Yeah. I was born to love you. I was born to lick your face. I was born to rub you. But you were born to rub me first. What do you need my address for? We'd like to send out a mailer. Mother of mercy, I don't speak Japanese!